God bless you this day. I am very confident that by the grace of God, you are blessed. Today we are about to go into the word of God and pray. So we'll be praying a lot. Man of God, can you please send the link to the page? Okay. To the WhatsApp group. I feel the same. 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 God bless you so much. I bless you today in the name of Jesus. Please get your Holy Bibles. Um, we are about to go into the Word of God. Please get your Holy Bibles ready. Amen. God bless you so much. Men and women of God that have tuned in. Please get your Holy Bibles ready. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Hey. God bless you, man of God, for more tight testing. <laughs> I love this song. Namine Kumo, Namine Manko, Antinuma, Bibi, I'm <laughs> Yes, you am right, but so I think I say Kabada Brosha. Well, God, let's just pray in the Holy Ghost. Let's just pray. The Bible says that you, beloved, building up yourselves in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Jude 1 20. We just want to open our mouths and pray in the Holy Ghost so that the Holy Spirit of God will take control. Let's just pray. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Master Kere de Brosha. Le Karada Brosha, Le Rede Brosha, Le Karada Brosha, Le Barada Brosha, Le Karada Brosha. Pray in the Holy Ghost, Masse Karada Brosha, Le Dada Brosha, Le Babada Brosha, Kede de Brosha, Le Barada Brosha, Kababa Yaba, Le Barada Brosha, Kabada Brosha, Le Brekede de Brosha, Kababa Yaba, Le Baba Yaba, Kabaya Bayaba, Le Brosha, Kede de Brosha, Kababa Yaba. Ere de broche kababa yaba, lebro kore de broche kaya broche. Spirit of the Living God, somebody praying the Holy Ghost. The Bible says in the book of Jude one twenty, but dear beloved, building up your faith, building up yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Mashe kere de broche kaya broche, lebara da broche kere de broche, lebro she kababa yaba. Le brosho kuye bre karada brosha. Le brosho kuye de brosha kaya bayaba. Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Karada brosha. Le brosha kaba. In the name of Jesus. We pray in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 We give you all. The glory we give you all the glory we 
give you all the glory. Yes, pick it up, please. You cry, is the Lord. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Please lift your heart. Lift the voices wherever you are. And so oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. He cries, the Lord. Oh, come, let us adore him. 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 Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to adore you. We come to extol you. We come to magnify your holy name. We pray this day that you will have your way in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I commit this platform into your hands. I commit every soul into your hands. I commit everybody into your hands. Spirit of the living God, we pray that you will have your way, Lord. We ask in the name of the Lord Jesus that you establish your perfect will. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Beloved, God bless you. Um, throughout for, for about four, four to five weeks now, we've been dealing with God seeker. Amen. God bless everybody for joining. Amen. God bless my senior brother, Bongo Ma. God bless you so much. Amen. God bless Pastor Anita. God bless Ernest. Everybody else that has joined, God bless you. Amen. Um, Today, you know, by the grace of God, we are still continuing with the God seeker. You know, one thing in life that everybody must long after is to seek God. Because this world did not just happen. This world did not just happen. That's why you get astronauts, you get learned people who who would want to go beyond the earth, who would want to go beyond the com their confinements of this of this earth, to want to see more. Because that is what you and I must be. Amen. We must be God's seekers. Amen. We must seek God. Because especially in this generation, everybody, everybody is walking around calling themselves men and women of God. These days, even especially in Ghana, I, I saw a video, somebody killing a cow in, in a church cooking for them. And he is saying that he too is a man of God. This person will tell you A. Another person will tell you B. Woman of God, I always say this, that there was something I wanted to do. There was a decision I had to make. And the, this decision, one man of God will tell me God says A, and another man of God will tell me this same God says B. Beloved, this generation must be a generation that seeks God. Amen. We've been a generation that seeks men instead of their God. And it is a big mistake. Amen. It is a very big mistake that we are, we are putting ourselves in. And so in this generation, you know, by the grace of God, it is my prayer that we will be God seekers. Hallelujah. We Amen. must be God seekers and not seekers of men. You know, most of the time, as a servant of God, by the grace of God, I've had people, woman of God, I told you some, right? I've had people who call me, and then when I'm not able to talk to them, they take offense. Huh. I've had people who would call me. 
and when I'm not, maybe I'm not available, I'm not able to talk to them, it's like all hell breaks loose for them. Why? Because, yeah, thank God, because they believe, amen, they believe the Lord has blessed me with some giftings, which is good. They believe the Lord has blessed me with an anointing, which is very good. But beloved, if we are not careful, we will be following men instead of God. Amen. Amen. And this is the truth. Every true man of God will tell you this. That don't seek men. Be a God seeker. Amen. Be a God seeker. And so throughout this teaching, myself and the, and the woman of God, by the grace of God, has been using us to make all of us, including ourselves, to understand first the fundamentals of our human existence. You know, we've understood the fundamentals of our human existence. First, we have to understand why do we exist? Why are we here? Why did God create us? Amen. Beloved, what, I am, what we are trying to let you and I know is that it is about time we put an end to seeking men instead of seeking God. That is why the Ten Commandments came to pass. Amen. That is why, the ten, that is why God gave the Ten Commandments. Because men was, were seeking men instead of God. That is why in Exodus 20, when God was bringing the Ten Commandments, he had to reintroduce himself. He says, I am the Lord, your God, the one who delivers you. It is me. God was just telling them that I am the one who delivered you. It is me. Don't give the credit to someone. So obviously, they were giving credit to someone. And so the Lord said, do not worship any other God apart from me. Amen. Do not worship any other God apart from me. It is me that delivered you. I am the one that delivered you. Don't credit someone else. And, you know, so God can never compare himself to a river that he has created. People can choose to worship a river, but God will never compare himself to that river. God will never compare himself to trees, to, to stones, to wherever. Amen. God can only compare himself to the man he made in his image and likeness. Hallelujah. God, the Lord, can only compare himself to the one he made in his image and likeness. Hallelujah. Hebrews 11, 6 says, you know, for without faith it is impossible to please God. And they that come to God must first believe that he is. Amen. And he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And so we learned the fundamentals of our human existence, which is what? God created us to be shepherds. Amen. To be farmers. God created us to tend after the living creatures, the animals, the wild and animals, the bears, the fishes, and all the creatures that walk on the surface of the earth. That is the fundamental reason why man was created. Amen. To work for God. And everybody will work for the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, today... I want us to take something else. Amen. The reward. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Man of God, is that okay? The reward. Yes, sir. The reward. Oh, one second. Let me clear this up. Amen. It says, woman of God, without humility, if we can read Hebrews 11, verse 6. Amen. Yes. Okay. Um. Okay. Hebrews 
chapter 11, verse 6. Yes. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Mm -hmm. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Amen. Amen. Everyone that comes to him must first believe that he does what exists. Amen. And he rewards those who diligently seek him. Hallelujah. He rewards Amen. those who diligently seek him. Amen. And so today we want to talk about the reward. We want to talk about reward. Because when you are a God seeker, he rewards you. Amen. When you are a God seeker, when you seek the face of God, you, he rewards you. Woman of God, have you had an experience that maybe you devoted some time to wait on the Lord, to pray and to fast? And something else, like like you knew that there was something he did, for, something happened to you. He did something, you know, and you knew that I got this because I fasted, because I sought his face. Have you had such an experience before? Yes, sir. A lot of times, I believe, right? Yes. yes. So when you seek God, he rewards you. That is why most times when people want something from God, they, they devote themselves to fast and pray and to, you know, to seek God. Because the Bible says, woman of God, please read that again. Hebrews 11, 6. Okay. Hebrews 11, verse 6. Yes, please. Okay. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Mm hmm because anyone who comes to him must believe that anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Amen. Amen. Anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and he rewards those who earnestly or diligently seek him. Amen. 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 He rewards those who diligently seek him. And so I want us to talk about the reward. Amen. So, woman of God, let's please read Isaiah 3. Isaiah 3. And I pray in the name of Jesus that everybody that is joined, everybody that is watching, God will reward you in Jesus' name. Amen. You, when you, when you, when, yes, when you seek God, not when someone prays for you. It is good for people to pray for you. But, you know, you have to place an absolute dependency on God. And so when you call the man of God and they don't pick up, when you, you know, when you wake up to a dream, you have to seek God first. Amen. Man of God, please, Isaiah, pray. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 1. Yes. Um, see now, the Lord, see now the Lord, the Lord Almighty is about to take from Jerusalem and Judah both supply and support. All supplies of food and all supplies of water. Go ahead, please. Verse 2, the hero and the warrior, the judge and the prophet, the diviner and the elder. Verse 3, the captain of 50 and the man of rank, the counselor, skilled craftsman, and clever enchanter. Verse 4, I will make mere youths their officials. Children will rule over them. Mm -hmm. Verse 5, people will oppress each other, man against man, mm -hmm. neighbor against neighbor. Mm -hmm. The young will rise up against the old, mm -hmm. the nobody against the hun Yeah. Verse 6, verse 6, a man 
a man will seize one of his brothers in his father's house and say, you have a cloak. You be our leader. Take charge of this heap of ruins. Verse 7. But in that day, he will cry out, I have no remedy. I have no food or clothing in my house. Do not make me the leader of the people. Verse 8. Jerusalem staggers, Judah is falling. Their words and deeds are against the Lord. Defying his glorious presence. 9. The look on their faces testifies against them. They parade their sin like Sodom. Do not hide it. Woe to them. They have brought disaster upon themselves. Verse 10. Tell the righteous it will be well with them. For they will enjoy the fruit of their deeds. Amen. It says, tell the righteous it shall be well or it will be well with them. For they will enjoy the fruits of their deeds. Amen. This is God talking about, you know, things that will happen, things that, that's, that, that is about to happen to people in authority, almost virtually everybody. Amen. He says, see now, Isaiah 3, for those who just joined. God bless you. Good morning. Um, Isaiah 3, for those who just joined. God bless you, man of God. He said, verse 1, says, See now, the Lord, the Lord Almighty is about to take from Jerusalem and Judah both supply and support. All supplies of food and all supplies of water. These are a people that God loves. But the Bible says, this is what God has, this is what God has decided to do to them. He's about to take all the supplies from them and all the support from them. Amen. Which means God's anger had been stirred up. Amen. Isaiah 3. Be I mean, beloved, we are still on the God seeker. And today we are talking about rewards. Amen. Reward. Because the Bible says in Hebrews 11 verse 6 that without faith, it is impossible to please God. And they that come to God must first believe that he is, which means he exists. And he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. And so as we keep seeking the face of God, um, we want to understand that it is not in vain. It is never in vain, but there is a reward that comes with it. Amen. Beloved, we are in a generation where, whereby people seek men. We are following, we are chasing after men rather than chasing after their God. Amen. It is not wrong to love a ministry of a man of God. It is not wrong, you know, to commit to the ministry of a man of God. But it is wrong if you make them your other God. Amen. It is wrong if they are the first person you talk to instead of God. Amen. It is very wrong. No matter who they are, no matter how anointed they are, I always tell people that when you wake up to a scary dream, for instance, the first person you must narrate that dream to is God and not any man. Amen. And so if you are not careful, you may not go to a shrine, but you may have a shrine. How you treat your, you know, how you treat the man of God in your life could make them a smaller God to you. Amen. And so we are a people who desire to seek God instead of men. Because men can disappoint you. You can call me every day. One day I may disappoint you. You can call your pastor every day. One day they may disappoint you. Amen. Men, what if they die? Hallelujah. And so we must learn to be a God seeker. And most times, some, some people can just talk to you based on their own emotions, you know, and claim that this is God. Amen. Some people can talk to you based on yeah, you know, I've had I've had situations or scenarios where I had an issue, I had issues, and you know, I I would talk to men of God, and sometimes I know I am wrong. I expect them to correct me, but they, because they know me, because I'm the one they know, they'll just be supporting me. Amen. And so, beloved, the Bible says it is even a curse to put your trust in a man. 
And so what we are doing, God bless the man of God, William, William Appiah. Amen. And so what we are doing is that by the grace of God, we are sick, we are learning, striving, striving to seek God instead of any other person or man. Amen. We will seek God instead of the law. We will seek God instead of, you know, authorities and whatever. Let's be a God seeker. Amen. And so now, in Isaiah 3, God's anger had been stirred up. And so he's saying that he's going to take his supply and his support from the people of Jerusalem and Judah. Amen. And he talk, he spoke about even people in high authority. He said the hero, the warrior, the judge, the prophet, the diviner, the elder, the captain of the 50, the man of rank, the counselor, skilled craft, craftsman, and clever enchanter. I will make mere youth their officials. You know how painful it will be that all these great men, you God will pick younger people to oversee them, to supersede them. Amen. Beloved, I want you to understand that God can do anything. Amen. God can do anything. Now, the verse 10 is where I want us to take very seriously. So it spoke about all the predicament, but the bad things that is about to happen. But it said, tell the righteous, it is well, I mean, it will be well with them. For they will enjoy the fruits of their deeds. Amen. Amen. Tell the righteous that it shall be well. Who is a righteous person? A righteous person is one whose sins have been forgiven. One who has been cleansed. One who lives a holy life. Righteousness is pretty much what? Cleanliness. Amen. Amen. One that is clean, blameless before the Lord. Amen. And we usually get to that stage where we devote ourselves to the Lord when we fast. Let's be true to ourselves. Let's be true to ourselves. There are certain things, that are, you know, certain sins we take for granted. But when we are fasting, we are so conscious of ourselves that we will not do them. Woman of God, Anna Uh huh. Yeah. What 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 can you say about that, please? It's true. I mean, something like, uh, like, you know, I mean, even not, wow. I think not even like waking up and submitting to God, reading your Bible is even a sin. Yeah. And when we are fasting, we make sure, because we are fasting, so we make sure to read our Bible. Meanwhile, when we're not fasting, we're not even like the whole, we can go the whole week without opening the Bible. Yeah. But when we're fasting, we make sure we open the Bible and also, like, when we're fasting, we make sure we don't gossip. Yes. Uh -huh. Like gossip, yeah. When we are fasting, yeah, we, we put all we, gossip yes. on hold. Uh huh. Yeah. Holy, holy, holy. We don't gossip, but then after the fasting, after, after fasting, all the all the yeah, 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 and then do whatever we like, yeah. So little little sins, yeah. But when we fasting, we are so conscious. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's true. You see, huh. and so and so we are usually righteous. We are usually in that stage when we seek God through fasting through prayer, through reading the word, when we are conscious, when we focus, when we are Jesus-centered. Amen. And so the Bible says, because you have done that, because you are that righteous, the Bible says, the Lord said, I shall tell you that it will be well with you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Beloved, because you are a God seeker, God's reward for you is that all things shall work together for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. It shall be well with you. That is the reward. It shall be very well with you. Amen. When you are a God seeker, it shall be very, very well with you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. One of God. 
I want I want you to just encourage somebody that may be watching because I, I just sense in my spirit that somebody is asking themselves I've been praying I've been fasting I've been seeking the face of God and you know it looks like God is not listening to me it looks like you know God is probably holding on to my sin I just want you to I just feel that you, you just encourage somebody to be strong in the Lord and just however the Lord will use you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Right. <clears throat> so um I just I just want to encourage my brother, my sister, whoever is going through something. <laughs> because um God, I mean, the fact that you're going through something doesn't mean God doesn't love you. God is holding on to your sin or anything. I mean, we all go through. We all go through a lot. You know, sometimes we go through pain, things, and we pray. And we still go through. But I just want to encourage you. Sometimes God wants to take you through the process, you know. Um... The Bible says, um, 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 Paul, right? Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, Paul. Yeah, um, God said, what? Well, my grace is sufficient for you. Yeah. I mean, for you. Second, second yeah. Corinthians 12, verse 7. He was going through something. Paul being an apostle, he was going through a lot. But then, God made him go through that to humble him and so i'm just here to encourage you whatever you are going through is that's not the end for you it's not going to kill you the bible says the devil went to i mean god satan went to god and told god to deliver job into his hands but god told him you can do whatever you want to job but you cannot take his soul and so whatever you're going through it's not going to kill you or it's not going to like disgrace you or anything but sometimes god allows things to happen um one day i mean i think we were learning we were on the live and you said something that god it really touched me you said god knows um what we can handle yes and how yeah so this is the god that we serve he knows what you can handle he knows your strength he will not bring you anything that you cannot handle whatever comes your way he knows that you can handle it and so therefore i just want you to know that you have to just keep on god loves you he is with you and he will never leave you or forsake you whatever you're going through he's still there and he still got you amen amen Amen. God bless you. Whatever you're going through, he's still there and he still got you. Amen. Beloved, um, I want us to, so for those who just joined, this is, we are still on the God Seeker. Um, we have understood the fundamentals of our living or our existence, which is to work for God. Amen. And we have also learned a, a whole lot. Amen. And so today we are talking about reward because the Bible says, for those who come to God must first believe that he is, and he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. And so we just want to talk about reward. Amen. Reward. Amen. Reward. So woman of God, as so we just read from Isaiah 3, um, and in Isaiah 3, God's anger had been stirred up. He was very angry with the people of Jerusalem and Judah. And he said, he said, I will take my supplies and my support from them. It's, it is like, I will give up on them. You know, I'm going to make sure they struggle. But in the verse 10, he said, tell the righteous that it is well with their soul. It is well with them. Amen. And so when you are a righteous person, when you seek God, when you commit yourself to the Lord, you know, you may go through storms. You may go through storms, but it shall be well with your soul. Amen. Somebody may tell, somebody may say, "Oh, you, it, you know, talk is cheap." You just talk. listen. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not only talking from the Bible. I am a living testimony to it. Amen. 
I'm not only talking from the Bible. I am a living testimony. Amen. I'm not only talking from yes. the Bible. I am a living testimony that when you when you decide to commit yourself to God, some of the things you will go through. But if you can laugh at your pain, at the end of the tunnel, uh, at the end of every tunnel, there is a light. Amen. Woman of God, you live in New York. You've lived in New York for years. Um, in New York, there are tunnels, right? You see, when, yeah. when you are driving through New York, you know, you pass through a tunnel. And in the tunnel, it is usually dark, apart from the lights that are inside. You know, even when you're coming to New Jersey. Yes, even tunnel. when you're coming to New Jersey, yeah. You drive through the tunnel, it is very dark. But the moment you get out of the tunnel, you will see lights. Amen. At the end of every tunnel, whatever you may be going through, there is a light that awaits you. Just persevere. Just be persistent. Just be consistent and commit to your promises with God. Amen. And so today, we want to take a case study on a man of God who went through a tunnel. Amen. A man of God who went through something, but there was a reward. And we will all compare or relate our, our lives to it. Amen. I just We just came your way to encourage somebody that laugh at your pain, for there is a reward for someone. If you're a God seeker, you will surely get a reward from God. Amen. You will surely, it may not be what you think you need, but he will give you wh what, you know, you actually need. Amen. So I, Isaiah, no, First Kings 19. First Kings 19, please. First Kings chapter 19. First Kings chapter 19. Yes. Okay, verse 1. Uh -huh. Now it happened. Yes, please. Okay. Now it have told Jezebel anything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, May the gods deal with me. Be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like that of one of them. Verse 3, Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Bathsheba in Judah, he left his servants there. While he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, he came to a broom bush sat down under it and prayed that he might die hold on please uh -huh. god okay. bless you just this is the background of it you see elijah was being threatened by jezebel jezebel was a demonic person a very strong demonic person now elijah what did he do Elijah had slain all the prophets of Baal. Elijah had attacked them, killed all the prophets of Baal. Now, and so the Bible says in 1 Kings 19, and Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done because he had killed the first prophets. Amen. He told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. And how he has slain all the prophets with a sword. Amen. And so the Bible says, um, Jezebel also sent a message or a messenger to Elijah, Elijah, that hey, even if I don't, I swear, if I don't kill you, <laughs> may, the, may the girls deal with me. Amen. If I don't kill you, may the girls deal with me. This is Elijah. Woman of God, you know Elijah, right? Elijah is the man that prayed. Go ahead. He commanded fire. He commanded fire to come down. Such a powerful man like that. The Bible says in James 5, 16, I think, or 17, the Bible says, I think 16, yeah. The Bible says, Elijah 
is a man like you and I, subject to human nature. But he was able to command the heavens not to rain. And for three and a half years, it never rained. Until he said, now nah, let it rain. Such a powerful man of God he is. Elijah prophesied to dry bones. And they came back to life. Such a powerful man of God he is. If there is nothing we should, if there is nothing we should, if there is not anything we should fear about Elijah, there is one thing, which is even praying for fire to come down. It is not easy. But when Jezebel threatened him, he was on the run. He was running away. Beloved, I want you to understand. Beloved, God bless you. Beloved, I want you to understand that sometimes it is normal that you may feel so fearful that you might want to run away from your pain. Sometimes it is very normal that you might want to give up. Sometimes it is very normal that because of what you may be going through, you might think less of the power of God. I'm not saying it is okay. I am saying that as human, sometimes it is, it is very possible that you get to that level. But I came, we came in the name of the Lord Jesus to let you know that there is a reward for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. And so, woman of God, I want you to read, start reading from the verse 2 again. 1 Kings 19. Yes, sir. First Kings chapter 19 from verse 2. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, May the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like that of one of them. Mm -hmm. Verse 3. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there. While he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, he came to a broom bush, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. Have you been there before? The oh, sometimes yes. you go through things, <laughs> and you wish you were dead. Oh, yes. Beloved, I want you to know huh. that maybe right now you are you are contemplating, you wish you were dead. People don't see. But you know something you are going through. Sometimes huh. you wish you were dead. I want you to understand that it is very possible that you get to that stage. Because even Prophet Elijah got to that stage but still there is a reward for you amen the bible says after jezebel was threatening the man of god he ran away a woman of god do you know that even after running away he got to a place left his servants there and he went deeper into the bush the wilderness Sometimes it is very possible that because of what you are going through, you may leave a company. You may leave a fellowship. When I talk about company, I'm not talking about where you work. I'm talking about a, like a fellowship, people that you, 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 you hang out with. Maybe your church. You, you might, sometimes we get to that stage that you don't want to deal with anyone. So I've, I've been there before that I, I don't even feel like going to church. And I know you've been there before. It is very possible. Maybe right now, that is what you are thinking about. Right now, everybody gets on your nerves. Right now, every little thing provokes you. Right now, you may be crying that, God, why? Kill me. I wish I was dead. That's probably why, you know, that's probably what you may be contemplating on. 
My beloved, I want you to understand that. Even though you've made those statements, even though they are not good statements, God still loves you. He's still thinking about you. And there is a reward for you. There is no reward for you because you, 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 you said you wish you were dead. There is no reward for you because you cried or you gave up. There is a reward for you because you are still a God seeker. There is a reward for you because upon all you've been through, you still seek the face of God. Remember, the Bible says, Tell the righteous that it shall be well with them. Woman of God, are you there? Yes. Has the thing started? No. Yeah, I did it. Yeah, I did it. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Wow, wow, wow. So it went back? Mm -hmm. Wow, we thank God. Amen. Amen. Okay. So, woman of God, I want you to, um, you see, this is, I want you to tell us something. Preach to us. This is the man of God, great man of God. You, you are a great man of God. We are following you. And a woman, a witch threatens you and you run away, leaving your, you know, leaving as the servants behind. Woman of God, what can you say about this? What would take, what would make a man of God, a great man of God like that, like Prophet Elijah, run away? Is it normal? Was it a pharaoh? Please tell us something. Preach. I just well, I mean, I, I, first of all, um, one of you know, they, I mean, men of God, they are also human, human beings. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, they are also human beings. They go through whatever we go through. Yeah. And so it's, I mean, it's, I, to me, it's normal. It's just like, you know, a, I mean, every a human being yeah. will react the same way. But I'm saying, um, because he, I mean, the fact that he ran away, um, verse, uh, when you read verse, Third, verse 3, Elijah was afraid, yeah. which is very normal because he's a human being yeah. to be afraid. But then, and he ran, so he ran for his life. But the fact that he ran, when he ran, when he, ran he came to Bathsheba in Judah and he left his servant there. Yeah. So he left his servant there. That means he went seeking for God, you know. So he realized that, okay, so this is what Jezebel is saying. If I don't run, I don't run to God, because this woman is very wicked. Whatever she says, she would do, you know. Mm. And so at this point, I cannot, he realized he cannot fight Jezebel, you know. So pause he there. has to leave everybody. Pause there. pause there, please. You have brought a very good, you know, you have brought a very good thing there. He ran to seek God. Because yes. Yes, how do I, how do we prove that? Because when he got there, he started talking to God. But uh -huh. but his conversation was wrong. Uh -huh. Sometimes you can be a God seeker uh -huh. and have a wrong conversation. Yeah. We've all we've all done that before. Haven't you gone to God? before and said god why me why why uh -huh. why don't you love me why you know haven't you done that before that was uh -huh. what the man of god did haven't you prayed that lord take my life i wish i was dead you can uh -huh. be a god seeker but with the wrong prayer request or wrong conversation and so i like what you just said but please continue okay <laughs> So, okay, but I mean, he ran after God. He ran to see God. But like you said, yeah. his con I mean, his conversation was very wrong. Yeah. For saying, I mean, at that moment, he was like, like depressed. <laughs> yeah. Like a normal human being would do. He was afraid. He let, he let that um, God into him, a powerful man of God. And he let man, somebody like Jezebel, 
Yeah. Like scare him off. Yeah. Um. He wants to go here, like I so, said. So, so like, what, what would you tell? What would you tell somebody that may be running away? You know, you know, there are people like that. There are people who are too like always afraid. Which is even when they see fly, when they see like, what would you tell? What would you tell people like that? Sometimes you know it is possible to panic. But why? You see, right now we are here talking about the man of God running from just a human being. Huh. So what? What would you tell someone that may feel like they have to run away? Some somebody, for all you know, somebody wants to quit their job because there is someone there that is tormenting them. Uh -huh. So what would you tell someone like that? Okay, so I would say. God has given us power. The Bible says He has given us power mm -hmm. to trample over snakes and scorpions. You know, yes. um, He said, um, 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 to them that believe in His name, He gave them power to become the sons of God. And so, the fact that you believe in God, you have power over witches. I mean, they don't have power over you. So, I just want to say that, um. If you pray to God, yeah, right, oh, you make God your absolute, like the man of God will always say, absolute dependence. Yeah, when you depend on Him alone and you pray to Him, yeah, the Bible says what I'm, I'm sure God will, will not bring you this far to put you to shame, He will not let your enemies triumph over you, He yes. will not leave you or forsake you. Yes. And so, I believe, listen. If you trust in God, I mean, they, they might be they might be plotting, yeah. but don't just don't focus on don't focus on the devil, don't focus on the witches, yeah. because when you do that, then you give them power mm -hmm. over you. But the Bible says He has given us power, He has given us authority, dominion over yeah. everything, you know. Yeah. And so, if you focus on Him alone, you say, God, I don't care. I don't look out there. I don't care what is going on out there. And you pray to him and you, you keep your eyes fixed on him. I'm sure he will not leave you. He will not leave you for anything to devour you. So I, I'm just here. Elijah, Elijah, Elijah ran because he, he, um, look at what he was saying. God, um, I, I want you to kill me. I want to die. Because Je Je Jezebel, Jezebel is threatening his life. At that moment, Elijah forgot that he commanded. Um, I mean, he forgot that the the person that he is. He forgot the um, the powerful man that he is, and now, he ran. Pause there. That is another good point. Amen. Sometimes you have to remember your past victories. Uh huh. He forgot. The fact that God did this for you, he can do it for you now. Yes. If he did it before, he can do it yeah. again. Sometimes you have to remember what the Lord has done for you before. Oh, no, what... God, I don't want to cut you short. Too. Go ahead. That is what is holding me right now. Uh -huh. I'm telling you, you know, that is what is holding me. So when yeah. I go through some things, I, I just fix my eyes on God that you have done it, you know. Yeah. You did this for me, you did this for me, so you will not bring me this far to disgrace me, you yeah. understand? Mm -hmm. Believe me, because yeah. everything that God does is perfect. Yes. Everything that God does is good. Yeah. And so he has done this, he has done that. It's not now that he's going to leave you for your enemies to, to rejoice over you. Yeah. And so he has done this, he will take you, see you through. Yes. So that is what is keeping me. Yes. No matter what I face, yes. I just fix my eyes on that. Yes. That's it. Amen. 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 You see, and so he forgot about him. So that's why one of the, that's why the Bible says, and you shall overcome. And they overcame by the blood of the Lamb. Apart from the blood of Jesus, another thing that is also powerful is what? Uh -huh. Your testimony. What your is testimony. your testimony? Your past victory. It's not always about long prayers. Trust me, I'm a prayerful person. I pray too. But it is, the truth is the truth. It's not always about long prayers. Sometimes you have to encourage yourself in the Lord. 
Use yes. your testimony that God did this before when I was in a hopeless situation. Listen, I don't know who God is talking to right now. Right now, you feel like yes. giving up. There is a fear in you. You are so scared. Uh, you are so afraid. But if God has done it before, can't he do it again? Me. Huh. Can God do it again? Jesus. If he Jesus. did it before, look at some of the things he has taken you and I from. There is a reward for you if you would be a God seeker. Listen, to be a God seeker is not just about the five the five weeks of fasting, the one day of fasting. Every day you must be a God seeker. Every day you must be one who depends on God alone. Absolute dependency on the Lord. If he did it before, why would Jesus. you allow fear to be in you? Jesus. When the moment fear grabs, grips into you, or when you, whenever, whenever fear has its way in you, you have to understand that there's a demon in you because fear is a spirit. And God said, I've not given you that spirit of fear. Fear is not my spirit. It is a demonic spirit. And so when you have fear, you have a demon in the inside of you. God. When you allow fear to be in you, right there and then, you have to know that a demon has entered you. Why are you afraid? For without faith, it is impossible to please God. And they that come to God, they that are God seekers, must first believe that God is, He exists, and He's the one, He's the rewarder of them. That diligently seek him. Yes. Please share this video. Patience, this I hope so patience, I hope you have done the thing though. Go Jesus. ahead, please. And so yes. why are you afraid? There is a reward for the fact that you still believe in God. There is a reward for the fact that you are not sitting in front of a shrine right now. People may be laughing at you. Your health may be deteriorating, but hey, there is a reward. Isn't God yes. the healer? Yes. Isn't he the one that is even able to heal, to raise the dead? Even if I die, believe that even if I die, this God is able to raise me up. Ah. Laugh at your pain. There is a reward ah. for you. I pray in the name of Jesus that any spirit of fear that has entered anybody lives now by the fire of the Holy Ghost. I command in the name of Jesus, let the spirit of fear, the spirit of fear, leave each one of us in the name of Jesus. Whatever God has spoken, that will he do. If ah. he spoke it, he will do it. Ah. God said he will bless you. God said he will reward you. God said he will honor you. Listen, the Bible says, for we live by faith and not by sight. If you look at what is happening, you might give up, but live by faith. Faith is when you are a God seeker. Because in Hebrews 11, 6, when the Bible spoke about faith, the next thing it spoke about was coming to God, seeking Him. Woman of God, read Hebrews 11, 6, and let's know when God spoke about faith, the next thing it spoke about was coming to Him. So faith is seeking God. It's not just about believing. Please read Hebrews 11, 6. Yes, sir. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Uh -huh. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Mm -hmm. Because anyone who comes to Him... Hold on. Must... Without faith, you cannot please God. And He said, because anyone who comes to Him, because, you know, it, it is by faith that you will go to God. 
yes you have faith in him yes if you yes. if you have faith in him you have to go to him mm -hmm. that is why when the bible speaks of faith the next thing it speaks of it speaks about is coming to him not sending someone not sending Ernest, not sending Nanajumo, not sending anybody else, not sending bishop, prophet, whatever. But when, without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone that comes to him, listen, do you have faith? Be a God seeker, run back to the Father. You must come to God. Don't send a pastor. Don't send a bishop. Don't listen. It is good that they pray for you. But listen, 80% of your conversation with God must come from you and not from anybody. Seek God for yourself. Run back to the Father. And he will reward you. Because there is a reward. Because guess what? If you tell me your prayer request, and you relax, and I am the one always telling God that Father, do this for this person. Guess what? I will give the most of the reward, just so you know. I'm not saying don't tell me your prayer request. I'm not saying don't tell your man of God. This is the truth that you need to know. Now listen, it is even a curse. It is in the Bible that curse is the one who puts their trust in a man. It is a curse. Seek God. Woman of God, were you reading something? No, no, sir. Oh, okay, I thought, I thought. I'll read it at Hebrews 11. Yes, yes, yeah, please read that. Hebrews 11. Yeah. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Mm -hmm. Without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to Him must believe that he exists yes. and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Yes, that is faith. You have to believe that this God that I am going to go on my knees to seek, he exists. And if I would diligently seek him, if I will earnestly seek him, I mean seek him, there is a reward. Somebody said there is a reward. Yes, oh, please say it like you believe. Say there is a reward. There is a reward. In Jesus' name. Listen, as you are seeking God, may He reward you. Listen, by the end of this broadcast, whatever we are believing God for, including myself, let there be a reward in the name of Jesus. Let there yes. be an answered prayer. I declare and I decree in the name of Jesus, there shall be a reward. Amen. He said, they that seek the Lord must believe that he exists and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So, man of God, um, so woman of God, what happened to prophet Elijah? Let's continue that. First Kings 19. I think we are in verse 4. First Kings 19. Let's see what happened to prophet Elijah. Who was running away from Jezebel? Okay. First Kings chapter 19, verse 4. Mm -hmm. While he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, mm -hmm. he came to a broom bush, mm -hmm. sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. Mm -hmm. I've had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. Man of God, have I you said that before? Yes, sir. Please, yes, I, I have. I told you. I told. I. I think I even said on Facebook some time ago that one time I prayed that mm -hmm. Lord kill me. You don't love me. Yeah. Kill me. I said that before, right? Mm, I yes. pray. I pray that Lord kill me. You don't love me. Mm -hmm. And and you know when I saw that letter, because I even I actually wrote a letter. When I saw that letter about two years after, I said, wow, what was I thinking? What was I thinking? Listen, a time is coming and I prophesy that God is about to do something for you. It will make you, it will make you, it will make you know that for every complaint you complain, it was a sin. 
It will make you regret any time you, you ever complain. It will make you know yes. that, hey, listen, what I was going through was actually very needed. It was actually yes. very necessary. Laugh at your pain. What you may be going through today may look like a pain, but if you be Jesus-centered, if you focus on the Lord Jesus Christ, if you not give attention to the devil, the Bible says, in all your ways, just acknowledge God. Think about God. See God in it. Be Jesus-centered. Forget about demons. Forget about witches. Who are they? Don't run away from them. Don't run away from Jezebel. If God be for you, who can be against you? Woman of God, let's read First Kings 19. Continue from verse 4, please. Okay. Um, and then in uh, verse, verse 4, he came to a broom bush, sat down under it and prayed that he might die. I've had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I'm no better than my ancestors. You see, he's comparing but, himself to the dead. <laughs> he's comparing himself to the dead. Listen, you are greater than that sickness that is in you right now. Amen. You are greater than, than, than that poverty that is just temporary in your life. You are far more greater than your, your current circumstance. Stop talking down on yourself. There is more to your life. There is more to my life. If only you know where God is taking you and I, you will not complain. The Bible says in the book of Numbers chapter 11, the Bible says when the people complained, it displeased the Lord. One thing that God hates is when people complain. Maybe you might think it is normal. Maybe you might think I am frustrated. Listen, when they complained in Numbers 11, the Bible said God sent fire to come and consume them. Stop complaining. Stop murmuring. See God in whatever you may be going through. It may be painful, yes, but just acknowledge God. God is against any form of complaint. I'm not saying when you when something is uncomfortable to you, you just sit that you have to sit down. No. It is good to pray. Make sure that you are praying with faith with confidence that something positive is about to happen. Sometimes you may be complaining to God. You may, you may go before God and be complaining and think you are praying. There is a big difference between complaint and prayers. Prayer is done with faith, believing that though I may be going through this, Father, I bring it before you because I know that it is very easy before you. When the people complained in Numbers 11, the Bible said it displeased God and God sent fire to consume them. The reason why you probably are still, is still going through the same thing, you're still going through challenges, is because instead of praying, you've been complaining. And so right now, it may be God himself sending the fire against you. Woman of God, please pause there. Let's read Numbers 11. Sorry for you know doing that to you, but I just want us. I, I just want someone to know that complaints can bring troubles to you, and it's all from a demon. Numbers 11, please. Okay. Please, are you there? Yes, sir. Numbers okay. 11. Numbers 11. Please always get your Holy Bibles. This Bible has been to different countries. <laughs> anyway. Numbers, Numbers 11. Yes, please. Chapter 11. Mm -hmm. 
Now, the people complain about their hardships in the hearing of the Lord. I love your version. Wait, what kind of version is that? NIV. He said, now, the people complain about their hardships. Are you complaining about your hardship? Are you complaining about something you may be going through? Then this is for you. Numbers 11. So now, the people complained about their hardships. Woman, go, go ahead, please. Wow. Now, the people complained about the hardships in the hearing of the Lord. And when he heard them, his anger aroused. His anger aroused. You know which kind of people? These are the Israelites. The people that at some point were sleeping with themselves. Men were sleeping. They became homosexuals. They took, you know, they took their earrings, their ornaments, and, make, and even made a shrine out of them. But when they were doing all those, God did not like that. But he wasn't as angry as when they complained. Listen, when you complain, it is like insulting God. It is like telling God that you are powerless. Yes. So these are the Israelites. They disobeyed God. He didn't do nothing to them. They became homosexuals. He didn't do nothing to them. But when they complained, the Bible said God was so angry. Woman of God, read that again, please. I will try not to talk. Numbers 11. If you have been complaining, this is for you. Numbers 11. Mm -hmm. Now, now, the people complained about their hardships in the hearing of the Lord. And when he heard them, his anger aroused. Mm -hmm. Then fire from the Lord burned among them and consumed some of the outskirts of the camp. When they were complaining, God sent fire to consume those that, are, that were in the back, the outskirts. Listen, those people that were in the outskirts, the wilderness. So just imagine... You know, when you get something, when you get frustrated, you end up in the wilderness because that is what happened to the prophet. One of God, I, do you get the do you get the revelation? Please come again. I said, when when prophet Elijah was running from Jezebel, do you <laughs> realize that at some point he left the servant somewhere? And he went yeah. to the outskirts, to the wilderness, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now God is saying, the Bible is saying, when the people complain, God sent the fire where? Mm. To the outskirts. To the outskirts. Mm -hmm. because, mm. because that is where, when people give up, that is where they end up. Yes. Beloved, please, no matter what you are going through, Know that there is a reward for you. Laugh at your pain. Whatever you are going through, just hold on to this God, this Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Just hold on to him because at the end of every tunnel, there's a light. But if you are complaining, then you have to know that you are attracting the anger of God. When the people worshipped an idol, he did not send fire to burn them. When the people became homosexuals, he did not send fire to burn them. But when the people complained, that is why he sent fire to consume them. Those that were in the outskirts, the uttermost part of it, the wilderness, those that have given up, he sent fire, sent fire, fire to consume them. Woman of God, what do you have to say? Wow. So, that means God, God doesn't want us to complain at all. No, because it is very disrespectful to him. <laughs> right? Kabusha, lehebro kadabro. Liba sudi kadabra. Yes, Lord. Because even, for example, when you are, it's like you telling him that he he doesn't have the power. Yes. 
which obviously he knows whatever he's doing he knows whatever he does yes so it's um you telling him what to do it's like you go to somebody hired you and you telling them what to do yes but they know what they're doing they are the boss you know they they have everything in their in in, in their power yes and it's like you are complaining it's like you're telling him oh haven't you seen this haven't you seen that yes he is the creator of the whole universe he sees everything yes wow this is <laughs> we complain every day man of god yes <laughs> You see, and, and that is why let's be true to ourselves. Let's be true to ourselves. The times we complain, the things we complain about are the things that keeps, you know, getting worse or aggravated. Oh, no. yeah, it's like, you know what? You tell me, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. And so, oh. for most of us, the reason why the very things we've been complaining about, the reason why it keeps messing up, it's not because a no, demon, no. it's not it's not because it's a demon, it is because God is sending fire to that oh, area. Jesus. Let's stop complaining. Turn your complaints into a prayer because oh. there is a reward. Amen. And so oh. back to first Kings 19. Man of God, sorry, sorry. Is um numbers eleven continue, continue numbers eleven because something else happened. Some kind of numbers. Um, yeah. Numbers. This one. Numbers chapter eleven. Oh. The so, same place. The same. Okay. Numbers chapter 11. Mm-hmm. So we got to um, verse 1. Oh, start from verse 1. Yeah, we got to verse 2. Yeah. But read from verse 1 so that some, someone else may understand it. Numbers chapter 11, verse 1. Now the people complain about their hardships in the hearing of the Lord. And when he heard them, his anger was aroused. Then fire from the Lord burned among them and consumed some of the outskirts of the camp. Verse 2. When the people cried out to Moses, he prayed to the Lord and the fire dried down, died down. Sorry. When the people cried out to Moses, Moses prayed to God. So when the people cried out to Moses, it is a process. Okay, did the fire did the fire stop when they cried out to Moses? It died. It died. Yes. No. No, 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 no. When Moses started praying, it was when Moses sought God. Sure. So it's a process. They were burning, and they were crying to Moses. But when they cried to Moses, that distance from them to Moses, nothing happened. They were still burning. Uh-huh. It was until Moses cried to God, prayed to God, and the fire stopped. That was then. This time, whatever you are going through, be a God seeker. Because there is a reward. You may be burning in the fire, but it is quenchable. Jesus. Every fire you are going through is quenchable. Every pain you are going through, it is solvable. Whatever puzzle you find yourself in, I say God has that solution. Jesus Christ is the answer. He's the same today, yesterday, and forever. But make sure that you are a God seeker. Learn to go before God by yourself. Learn to go on your knees. Even if you, even though you may not hear anything, you may not see anything, you may probably not dream, just keep seeking God. Be a God seeker. Keep seeking the face of God. When the people complained, it displeased God and he sent fire 
to quench them. He sent fire to the uttermost part of it, the outskirts, because that is where those that have given up, that is where they end up. I want you to understand that by your complaints, you can attract the fire of God. That is why the situations we've been complaining about that's why it keeps getting worse and worse and worse. And you have been you have been cracking bottles, you have been throwing stones, you have been giving directions to kill demons and nothing. And your suspects keep getting bigger. The people that you suspect that they are a witch, you have been praying against them, but they keep they keep getting bigger. Why? Because sometimes that fire may be coming from God because of your complaints. Be a God seeker. When you are sick, or when you are poor, or when something is not happening to you or for you, and you go before God and tell God, why don't I have this? You are telling God, it, it, it is like telling God that God, excuse me to say, it is like insulting God for keeping you alive and, and, and allowing someone else to die. You make him regret that he sustained your life. He sustained you when people were dying. Right, woman of God? When you complain, when you are sick, when, 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 you, are, when you are having a stomach pain, stomach ache, whatever, and just because of that, you say, God, why? Why are you trying to kill me, God? Why? Why are you not healing me, God? Why, why God? You are telling God, you are just telling God that God, I know this morning people died. But you kept me alive, but still, I don't appreciate it because my belly is hurting me. That is what we tell God every day. God, because I don't have a child, even though I'm alive, you don't love me. You love those that are dead than me. So kill me. Is that what you want to tell God? That, that's what Elijah said. I'm not better than... <laughs> yes, so I'm not better than the dead, my ancestors. But he was alive. And to be alive is one of the greatest miracles you can ever get. The things we say when we are complaining. Huh? Yes. Huh? We are always complaining. If we had to record ourselves and play it, but we say, whoa, <laughs> why see. did I say that? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> oh, God, I'm In a way. Okay. So, please continue. When, when Moses prayed, it stopped. Verse 2. When the I mean, um, Numbers chapter 11, verse 2. When the people cried out to Moses, he prayed to the Lord and the fire died down. So that so that place was called Tab Tabera mm -hmm. because fire from the Lord had burned among them. Mm -hmm. Amen. Go ahead. So go ahead. You know what? Let's go back to, let's go back to 1 Kings 19. First Kings nineteen. First Kings nineteen. You want to finish 19. very soon. Okay. Um. First Kings chapter nineteen. Yes. We can. We got to. Okay. Let me. Let me start from verse four. While he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. He came to her broom bush, mm -hmm. sat down and buried and prayed that he might die. I've had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I'm no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. Mm -hmm. All at once, an angel touched him and said, Get up and eat. He looked around and there by his head was some bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank, and then lay down again. Amen. Listen. Yes, amen. 
in your frustration, what you need is the bread of life. Maybe you might think what you needed is a, is a child, money, whatever. But what you need, what you really need in your frustration, when you get to that level where you feel like all oh, hope is gone, if there is anything you must seek to get, if there is anything you must desire, it must first be the bread of life, Jesus Christ. Because he is the bread of life. And so the Bible said the angel brought him bread to eat. Amen. What you need is Jesus. Maybe it may not, it may not be you, but maybe there are people that may be there are people that may be going through certain things. And so you are thinking, one of you, I believe you have said that to yourself before, that you know someone is going through something, and you know that what they need is money, but you don't have the money to give them right now, and so you feel so shy even to call them. But listen. Yeah. It is not always about money. What they really need is Jesus Christ. Feed your soul with the bread of life. Feed your soul with the bread of life. That was the reward that the angel brought the man of God. When the man of God had been in the wilderness, when the man of God was giving up, the reward the angel brought him was the bread of life, which is Jesus Christ. But let's see what, what happened. Please continue. Okay. Verse 7. The angel of the Lord came back a second time mm -hmm. and touched him and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. Listen. So in your frustration, hold on. In your frustration, I want you to know that get up. Because your journey is too much. There is more God wants to do with your life. Don't think this sickness is the one to take your life from you. Don't think your current condition is about to stop your journey in life. Get up. Pick yourself up. Eat Jesus. Pick yourself. Get Jesus on the inside of you. And pick yourself up and move. And so the Bible says the angel brought Elijah bread, which is the bread of life, Jesus, to eat and get up the second time. What happened, please? Continue. First Kings 19, verse. Okay. Verse 8. Okay. Verse 8. Yeah, I understand you. I know you are typing there. <laughs> okay. Um, so, verse 7. The mm -hmm. angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. He got up and ate and drank. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Strengthened by the food, mm -hmm. strengthened by that food, he traveled forty days and forty nights mm -hmm. until he reached he reached Horeb, the mountain of God, mm -hmm. where then there he went into a cave and spent the night. Amen, amen. So when he first ate the bread, he didn't go. Even though he was giving the bread, he didn't eat. Yeah, first he didn't eat the food. Until the angel came for the second time, right, woman of God? Yes. Yeah. Read, please read the verse 6 and 7 again. 6 and 7 again. Verse 6. He looked around, and there by his head was some bread. Big over hot coals. Mm -hmm. And a jar of water. Mm -hmm. He ate and drank and then lay down again. The Bible says, Verse please, the Bible says, Jesus said, whoever believes in me, out of their belly shall flow rivers of living waters. And the Bible says, by this, he meant the Spirit. The water represents the Holy Spirit. Amen. That is why when people are, that's why people are being baptized with water, 
for them to receive the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so in your frustration, two things do you need? Jesus Christ, which is the bread of life and the Holy Spirit. Let me repeat that. In your frustration, there are two rewards for you. Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Don't go, don't bypass them and go for any other thing. The rest are complementary. In your frustration, two things do you need? Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Patience, please make sure they have sent the thing to me. Woman of God, please read. Okay. Verse 7. Yes. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. Yes. So he got up and ate and drank. So strengthened by. Yeah, that is all I needed. So the angel had to come the second time. So the first time when he brought the bread of life, he didn't eat. So the angel had to come the second time, right, woman of God? Right? Um, the first one, he ate and drank and then lay down. Did yeah, he, he did Yeah, he ate, but he lay down. He didn't move. He didn't move. Yeah, he ate and he lay down, but he didn't move. He didn't make a move. Sometimes you, can, sometimes you may make... I mean, sometimes you may have Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, but still will be, you know, frustrated. You may have Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit and still will not make a move. You may have Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit and still will feel like giving up. I pray that the angel of the Lord will touch you too again, will revive you to get up. And move because there is a reward for your life there is a reward for your existence in this world please never give up but all this happens when you are a God seeker let's learn to let's learn to go on our knees let's learn to seek the face of God let's know that God hates complaint the time you will spend in complaining Talk to God. God hates complaint. That's why anytime you complain, the thing keeps messing up because the Bible makes us understand that when the people complain, he sends fire. And so whenever you complain, he sends fire against you. He hates complaints. Let's learn to be God seekers. Amen. Woman of God, we are going to end, but we are going to end here. But we are going to pray one or two prayers. But I just want you what? No, I just want you to tell us what you have learned so far. Or how has this been a blessing to you? Just brief. So we can pray. Oh, okay. Um I've learned that first of all, I've learned that we should stop complaining. Um we should turn all our complaints to prayers because God hates complaints. Yes. So instead of complaining, we have to turn everything, go to God and pray yes. to Him. And also, I've heard, I've learned that um, uh, no matter what we're going through, mm -hmm. we have to trust that God got us. Yes. And um, the fact that he did for us, he he did something for us before. Yes. He will do it for us again. So, in our frustrations or whatever we will do, we have to remember our past victories and anything that God that did for us in the past, he will do it. He will never leave us or forsake us. Amen. 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 God will never leave us or forsake us. Amen. If there is anything we must tackle, it is about our complaints. We are going to pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that anyhow we have complained, may God be merciful to us and may he quench every fire. Any problem we are facing because we complained, 
Because, beloved, there are certain things we are going through. It's not because a demon is working against you. It's because we complain and God sends fire against us. And so I want you to open your mouth wherever you are and pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that Lord forgive me for my complaints, Lord. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, forgive me for my complaints. Forgive me for my disbelief. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. Anyhow, I have complained. Anyhow, I am going through challenges. Say whatever I am facing as a result of my complaints. I ask in the name of Jesus the Father, you will rain your rain on me, Lord, and quench every fire in the name of Jesus. I pray for your mercies, O oh Lord, for every complaints, Lord, complaints, Lord, every complaint, Lord. We pray in the name of Jesus that you be merciful to us. Father, anyhow we have feared, anyhow we have complained, we ask for forgiveness, Lord. Whenever we gave up, Lord, be merciful to us, Lord. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. Fasting the process of God in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Isaiah 3, verse 10 says, Tell the righteous that it shall be well with their soul. God seekers, you, you want to pray in the name of Jesus. You want to tell your soul that it shall be well. You want to speak positive, positive things to your soul that it shall be well. I will be healed. I will be restored. I will be blessed. The financial release will be given me. There will be greatness. Just open your mouth. You know what you want to get. Just declare to your soul that it shall be well with your soul. Open up your mouth wherever you are. And if it is healing, say, my soul, it shall, you shall be healed. If it is a door you want God to open for you, you are praying to your soul that it shall open. I speak to my soul that great doors shall open. I speak to my soul in the name of Jesus. Uh, that is a financial release. I speak to my soul in the name of Jesus. Uh, I speak to my soul for the covering of God, uh, the protection of God, uh, the power of God released unto me. The power of God released unto me. Somebody open your mouth and pray. The Bible says, uh, Tell the righteous that it shall be well with their soul. You want to open up your mouth and pray that it shall be well with my soul. It shall be well with my soul. It shall be well with my soul. It shall be well with my soul by the power of the Holy Ghost. It shall be well with my soul. It shall be well with my soul. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Man of God, I want you to bring a prayer topic, any prayer topic based on what we have learned so far. Any prayer topic. I want us to pray that um, God should help us to stop complaining. Mm -hmm. That if anything that we are going through, that God should let us know that he got us, um, that we should stop complaining. I want us to pray. Let us pray. In the name of Jesus, Father, we pray that you help us to stop complaining. In the name of Jesus, grant us the strength. In the name of Jesus, to withstand whatever challenge we may be going through. We pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. They help us to stop complaining, Lord. Father, help us to stop complaining, Lord. Father, help us to stop complaining, Lord. Maya la broche, kede de broche. Holy Spirit, we pray. They help us to stop complaining, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. In Jesus' name. Help us to stop complaining.
Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. One prayer topic I want us to pray is that when Elisha was with the servants running away, he left them there and he ran to the wilderness. Sometimes your leader may separate themselves from you. You may not know what they may be going through. Amen. God bless you, man of God. Ezekiel, God bless you. You may not know what they may be going through. Sometimes, you know, our leaders, our fathers, our mentors, they go through a lot. Sometimes they cry that they wish they were dead. And so you may be following them. You may wish they, they had time for you, but you don't know what you, they may be going through. Amen. We are going to pray for every leader. We are going to pray for every true man or woman of God. Amen. We are going to pray also for husbands. Amen. We are going to pray for every leader, every leader, any person that is a head of a family, a head of, you know, of a ministry. We want to pray, soaking them into the blood of Jesus Christ. We want to pray that any frustration they may be going through, may God give them the strength so that like Elijah, they will all like Elijah, they will not pray that they will die. But may God strengthen them. Open up your mouth and pray. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we are praying for leaders. We are praying for leaders. In the name of Jesus, we are praying for leaders. In the name of Jesus, we are praying for leaders. In the name of Jesus, leaders. In the name of Jesus, leaders. In the name of Jesus, Masuku Patada Brasha. Holy Spirit, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray for our leaders. We pray for the fathers of the ministry. We pray for the mothers of the ministry. We pray for every leader. We pray for the Residence, we ask in the name of the Lord Jesus to our Labosha, Leke Badada Brosha, Leke de Brosha Cabayaba, Le Badada Brosha, Le Cabayaba, Le Badada Brosha. We are praying for every leader in the name of Jesus. Whoever feels like giving up, whoever may be frustrated, we pray in the name of Jesus that they will not run away from us. Pray for your various pastors, your church pastors, pray for your husbands. Pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. Every leader, every president, we are praying for them in the name of Jesus. The Lord, you will be with them. God, you will be with them. God, you will be with them. God, you will be with them. Be with them. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Can I ask, ask for prayer? I want, I want us to pray for the man of God. There is a big task that is ahead of him. Amen. And without God and without the Holy Spirit, he cannot do anything. He will go to Ghana, he will go to wherever he's going and just make noise and come back. He is his absolute dependency. So let it, I want us to pray, please, from, from the bottom of your heart. I want us to pray for this great man of God, this servant of God. He has unveiled himself for God. So I want us to pray. He has issues. He has problems, too. He has, he has um, things that he needs to take care of, too. But he always puts the work of God first. So I want us to pray for him, that God will grant him traveling mercies, God will use him to make an impact wherever he goes. And God will use him mightily for it to his glory. God should strengthen him, protect him. It's outgoing and incoming. Let us pray for him, please. Please. In the name of Jesus, my Father, Father thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you have done, Lord. Father, Father I, I submit Father, myself to you, Father, 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 please. You will carry me on your Father, wings on the wings of the eagle, Lord. I pray that, Father, you empower me, Father, prepare me for your work, Lord. I have been myself, Holy Spirit, that you will use me, Lord. Makaya broshe, kere de broshe, kababa. Father, I am just an empty vessel that you will fill, Lord. I pray that may you fill me with your power and your presence. Akabaya, Kabaya Brosha, Lake de Brosha, Lebara de Brosha, Kede de Brosha. May you sustain me, Lord. May you sustain me, Lord. With your hand, you will sustain me. With your hand, you will sustain me. You will empower me. You will open my eyes. You will open my spirit, Lord. You will use me to swing souls for you, Lord. Makaya Brosha, Lede Brosha, Kabaya Ba. I take authority in the name of Jesus over the atmosphere. I take authority in the name of the Lord Jesus over the globe. 
by the power of the Holy Ghost, Masi Kabrosha, Libantu Akaya Brosha, Libede de Banadabo de Debe, Libatu de Brosha Kabaya, Libronche Kabaya Brasha, Libren Tere de Brosha, Makaya Bra Kabaya Bra. I silence every demon, I silence every principality, I silence every power of darkness by the power of the Holy Ghost, Makata Kabada, Lakabada Bakaba, Libronche Kabrasha. I move in the authority and the power of Jesus Christ. Masoko baya brata, libantu akayaba, libel tere bronta, libon shikara brosha, liban tere di bronta, libadi di makaya, libaba baya kaba, liban shike brosha, masoko baya baba. The enemy will not have a better side of me. I am more than a conqueror. The Lord will use me. The hand of God will rest upon me. The power of God rest upon me. Salvation, healing, deliverance. Souls will be saved. Lives will be transformed. I take authority over every environment, every country I will be to. Makaya Motu Akayaba. Liva Dididi Masoba. Liva Dudi Brasha. Father, be my God. Father, be my help. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Carry me, Lord. Makabusu Kubrasha. Let me be a manifestation of your power, Lord. Let me be a manifestation of your presence, Lord. Let me be a manifestation of your anointing, Lord. Spirit of the living God. Father, may you use me, Lord. Holy Spirit, free me, Lord. Take away my uncleanliness, Lord. Take away my many sins, Lord. Take away my filth and my shame, Lord. Fill me, Lord Jesus. Prepare me for this, Lord. Prepare me for your work, Lord. For your words and horses are prepared for battle. The victory is of you. Masuku Paya Brata, Liba de Brosha, Le Brosha, Liba Tuli Kadadaba, Liba de Brosha, Masuku Paya Brata, Masu Badadaba, for I commit everybody, Lord, they'll be involved to you, Lord. Anybody that is playing any active role, I commit them to you, Lord. For I commit the people of England to you, Lord. I commit the people of Amsterdam to you, Lord. I commit Germany to you, Lord. Ireland to you, Lord. Ghana to you, Lord. Spirit of the living God, France to you, Lord. Maseke de Rebrosha. Liba Tudi Kadadabra. Masoko Yebreka. Liba Tudi de Brosha. Holy Spirit, Father, have your way. Use me, Lord. Let the blind see. Let the people walk, Lord. Let souls be one. Let souls be one. Let souls be one. I silence. I break the hold of every demonic power. I break the hold of every hindrance, whatever has stood against me. I crush them in the name of Jesus. Masuku Payabraka, Liba Didi Brosha, Masuku Brasha, Liba Tuli Brasha, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. At the end of the day, all glory will go to you, Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. I want, us to, I want us to take one prayer before the woman of God continues. Amen. This is very necessary. God bless you. You know, the Bible says in the book of Genesis, I think 22, verse 56, I think. The Bible says after after Eliezer, the, the, you know, the steward, the chief steward of Abraham had done performed the marital rite for Rebekah. The Bible says he stood, he was so comfortable, he acted, he relaxed. And the next day, um, the people said, the mother and the brother said, let Rebecca stay for 10 more days. But he stood up and said, do not delay me, knowing that the Lord has made a way for me. We are going to pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. This is the making of God. God has made a way. We are going to pray that whatever will come as delayance, financial delayance, Transportation delayance, ministerial delayance, anything 
any annoyance, anything that will be a hindrance. Masuku Bayaka Brosha, Masuki Broseki Brosha. We are praying in the name of Jesus. We are speaking to those demons. We are speaking to those attacks uh, that don't delay me, don't trouble me, don't even dare, because God has made a way. And the Bible says, when the servant made that decree, they gave him way to move. Uh, let's decree and declare that nothing stops this progress. Nothing stops this move. Nothing stops this. We are praying in the name of the Lord Jesus. That nothing by enemies will stop this. In the name of the Lord Jesus, whatever the enemy plots to stand our way, we come against in the name of Jesus. God has made this way. God has made this way. God has made this way. We decree and we declare that nothing delays us. We decree and we declare in the name of Jesus Christ. Let every great door open. Let every door open, the doors we desire, let them open in the name of Jesus, no more delay answer, no more delay answer, no more delay answer, any ministerial delay answer, we crush it in the name of Jesus, we overcome in the name of Jesus, financial delay answer, we break it hold in the name of Jesus, any attack, whatever, anybody will try to delay us, we come against in the name of Jesus, because the Lord has made the way, somebody pray for me, please, uh, that whatever we are going to do in any country, especially in Ghana, the UK, we are praying in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, that there will not be any delay, uh, people will, people's healing will not be delayed, miracles will not be delayed, my visions will not be delayed, the teachings will not be delayed, the services will not be delayed, nothing will delay, in the name of Jesus, we come against delay, the uh, the performance of the word of God will not be delayed. The Bible says he watches his word to perform. When God watches his word to perform, may it not be delayed. Every word that will be released out of my mouth in the name of Jesus will not delay, but it will go and accomplish its purpose in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, do not delay me. Every demon, every principality that will stand my way, I crush them in the name of Jesus. No more delay, sir. Everything will flow smoothly in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. The most important thing about everything that we are doing or we were going to do is about the salvation of souls. Amen. Salvation of souls. Permanent salvation. Not today, not, not repenting today and backsliding. We are going to commit all the souls that the Lord will touch, even Christians, that God will use me or use us to minister over. We are going to pray that there will be permanent, they will be permanently repented. Amen. Including myself, including you. Amen. We are going to pray, we are praying for permanent repentance. Amen. There will be permanence in their repentance. Just our salvation will be permanent. Amen. People's souls will be transformed by the grace of God. I've had, I've done an altar call and I saw even men of God coming forward. We want to see those in the name of Jesus that people will commit themselves truthfully and permanently to the Lord. Amen. Not They will not just be churchgoers. They will not just be Muslims. They will not just be Muslims who still believe in Jesus in a way. No, no, no. We are converting the hearts to people, to the Lord. Amen. The hearts of people to the Lord. So lift up prayer, committing every soul that they will be permanently saved, that there will be salvation, a pool of salvation. Let's open our mouths and pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that wherever we will go, wherever I minister, Father, let souls, Father, souls, souls, souls be won. Father, I pray that you place your words in my mouth, Lord. Let souls be won, Jesus. 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 Makaya Brushana. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let souls be won, Father. We commit the hearts of people to you, that you will touch their hearts, Lord. You will touch their hearts, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Man of God, do you have anything to say? I want us to close. Okay, God bless you so much. God bless everybody. Please 
continue to keep me in prayers continue to keep the team in prayers and especially those in the uk and ghana the team in uk and ghana amen uh please if you were supposed to do something especially those in ghana if, if you're supposed to do something and for whatever reasons you could not commit to them don't think i'm angry with you i'm not angry with you because you are not doing the thing for me anyways amen so um don't feel don't distance yourself or don't feel like you know i'll be angry I'm, I'm not angry with anyone if you work for god you get the blessings if you don't get if you don't work for god it's between you and god amen so please if you were supposed to do something especially those in ghana and you did not do it don't think i'm angry with you i'm not angry i i always say that if god spoke it he would do it amen the, the the last thing the last thing i would depend on is a man amen i will never depend on the man so please don't think i am angry with you i just pray that you commit truthfully to the work of god because everybody must work for the lord please daily daily between now and the time i'll come back to the u.s please commit me to your daily prayers please commit me to your daily prayers and i understand that this period of time is not the time that i would want to receive phone calls it's not the time that i would want to receive just any text message so please bear with me amen because this is the time that i'll be focusing you know and meditating on the things of god so i bless everybody in the name of jesus uh, and i pray that god's hand will be upon all of us amen whatever you are going through know that there is a reward god will reward you will reward you he surely will god bless you and bye bye woman of god god bless you so much please stay on the phone bye everybody you know what let me let me play um awari junior's song i know some of you most of you are not Ghanaian, so you may not know him let me play our fred awari junior's song one of his songs you know he's very respected in ghana a great man of god uh, you may not understand the song, but please bear with me. This song, this song became a very, it became a hit. It says, a year by this time, you too will have a child, you too will marry, you too will do this. Very humble, but one of the most humble men of God in Ghana, that's him. Rise of my... Yes, yes, yes. So my, my heart rejoices in the Lord. Some of the tree, some of the tree is, you know, they are too pure. They are too strong for us to say. Now you are here, and you are him on. Yeah, I feel so say a year by this time. Tomorrow by this time. A year by this time, you too will be great. Yes, that's what the song says. A year by this time, tomorrow by this time, you two will marry. Yes. I feel the same. I feel the same means to a year by this time. You two will get you two will get a child. Yes, a year by this time I will get a child. Jesus man. Anyway, I bless you. I have a lot of things to do. I bless you all in Jesus' name. Bye-bye.